Hey everyone, it's Peter Brown standing in for Phil Hornshaw's review in progress of Gears 5. Come on, time to face the music. For a lot of Gears 5, you might feel like you're playing another title straight out of the middle of the series Locust War from back during the original Gears of War trilogy. Much of the game, from the gunplay to the story, feels like past Gears of War games. The Coalition has definitely put a lot of emphasis on the core cover shooting elements of Gears that have always been strong in the franchise. But Gears 5 adds a lot of new ideas to the series, and all of them are useful evolutions for the franchise that strengthen its core aspects. On the campaign side, the Coalition has worked in some structural changes that open up how you'll fight and the encounters you'll get into. You'll still spend a lot of the game hunkering down in cover and popping up to score headshots, but for the first time, you'll have more options in battle and more chances to move around and use your different combat abilities. How you fight your many encounters with enemies in Gears 5 is altered most by Jack, the franchise's R2-D2-like robot who follows you around, opening doors and hacking computers. Jack now has a skill tree of abilities you unlock as you play and can use during combat. They allow you to do things like turn invisible to sneak up on enemies, or stun enemies to force them out of cover. You'll spend a lot of time amping up Jack's abilities with resources you find in the game, which is one of several ways Gears 5 provides you the opportunity to adjust the game to the way you want to play it. The middle portion of Gears 5 also contains two big open world type areas, a first for Gears of War. These areas are littered with small locations to explore and side quests to complete, all of which are like mini versions of the larger Gears levels and encounters you're used to seeing. You can wander these areas at your leisure, and they usually come with a waiting ambush, possibly a bit of progression on a side story, maybe a lore drop, and an item to improve Jack's abilities. The locations are fun, short diversions in their own right, and the more you explore, the more powerful Jack becomes, which is a pretty good incentive to cruise around and see what's waiting for you out in the wilderness. You'll also see new kinds of encounters in Gears 5. You won't always just run into swarm soldiers spoiling for a fight, for instance. Sometimes you might catch them unaware, giving you a chance to set up ambushes or even take out a few, or all of them, with stealth. The more open structure of the game means there are more chances to think about how you want to approach fights, and more opportunities to change the way you deal with your hulking foes. The open portions also provide some of Gears 5's best writing, as they give the characters lots of time to just hang out and talk. Most of Gears 5 focuses on Kate, one of the new characters introduced in Gears of War 4, as she searches for answers about her heritage. Gears 4 ended with the implication that Kate has a connection to the Locust, and a big chunk of the game has her exploring the questions that implication raises. But the best parts of it are the many conversations between Kate and her Delta squadmates, which do a lot to flesh out their characters. You get closer to the characters in Gears 5 thanks to these conversations. It's like going on a road trip with Delta Squad, and the game is great at showing the deep friendships between its characters through dialogue. You just filled his small mechanical heart with joy. Unfortunately, the rest of the story campaign doesn't hold up as well as its smaller character moments do. The second of the game's four acts is all about finding answers for Kate, but a lot of those plot lines get wrapped up or pushed aside by the middle of the game. Much of the rest just concerns the fight against the swarm threat, without advancing the overall story or the character beats beyond trying to restore the Gears series superweapon, the Hammer of Dawn. Add to the fact that a lot of Gears 5's story feels like it's rehashing old territory, and everything feels basically like it did back during the original Gears of War trilogy. The story ends somewhat abruptly in Gears 5, and it feels like the most interesting conflicts and character moments get swept aside to make room for more fights with big monsters. But the additions Gears 5 makes to the core formula all feel like thoughtful advancements for Gears of War's identity. That goes for the multiplayer side as well. On the competitive side, the Coalition doesn't alter much about how Gears plays. You're still dropping into cover, looking out for players with shotguns, and trying to control power weapons on every map. Instead, Gears 5 bolsters the experience with depth. The game uses ideas common to live service titles, and they all help flesh out multiplayer to make playing with friends feel more involved than just a series of matches. There are progression systems that let you advance your character to unlock new weapons and cosmetic items, and multiplayer provides a lot of different modes to work through. So whether you want some interesting twists with game types like dodgeball, or more traditional ranked play with team deathmatch, there's probably something for you. However, the live service influence is most apparent in the cooperative modes. The wave-based horde mode is back with some tweaks that push you to specialize your team. Instead of just having a squad role, as in Gears of War 4, you now have particular characters who all have special perks and ultimate abilities, like you'd expect to see in a hero shooter. The same is true in the new escape mode as well, which has you rushing out of a swarm hive while you flee from deadly gas, with only whatever limited items you can scrounge to help you fight your way to freedom. In both cases, you'll pick a character with a particular playstyle, and those additions help to vary Gears 5's gameplay and encourage teamwork. Characters aren't that different, and you're still spending a lot of time hitting chest-high walls, but the specialization options also give you the opportunity to play the game a little differently than you have through the last five entries in the series. 
You can even play as Jack in a pure support role. Co-op modes also have a ton of progression systems. You'll rank up your characters, unlock new skill cards to give them better perks and abilities, and even work through seasonal content and Fortnite-like battle pass pathways. It should be noted there are some cosmetic items you can purchase through microtransactions, but the Coalition has said all seasonal content for hard mode will be free. Gears 5 doesn't stray from what has made the Gears series strong throughout the franchise, and especially in its campaign, it might be a little too mired in the past. But with so many new additions, this is a meaningful step forward for the series. Everything the Coalition adds to the Gears formula helps to make Gears deeper and more open to a variety of playstyles and approaches. Whether it's the campaign or co-op, competitive or quick play, there's an option for you in Gears 5. And the new ideas it brings to the series are all good reasons for fans to return. Let's do it! <laughs>